talking about his knife designs. Pretty slick. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight with you guys is actually um, something I've been thinking about for a long time, and it's probably Brian Holocker's fault that we're going to talk about it. So what we're going to talk about is knife condition. I've seen a lot of questions about knife condition, and I've had to throw some people out of the group lately for not being honest or um, upfront about knife condition. So we're going to go through it tonight, and we're going to talk about how to properly represent knife conditions. This is going to be probably a uh, pinned announcement so that people can tag other people in it. Somebody has a question about it. So let's get started. So the first condition is called new in box. Look at this. I made notes for you guys. I'm a hero. New in box, NIB. New in box means that the knife is unopened and it's as it came from the store. You know, I have about, I don't even know how many. I've got a lot of knives and I have two knives in my possession that I would consider new in box. I have a danger pickle that has never been out of the plastic. I know it's number 615 because I kind of peeked through the plastic, but I've never opened it. This is new in box. So this knife is brand new as it came from the manufacturer. It's in box. This is a uh, nylon shaped box. And since I've never played with it, I can call it NIB. This is also a new in-box knife. This is a copper PM2 that just came today in the mail. I think I got the last ones on the planet. And um, this is also new in-box because it's literally never been out of the box. So if you guys are calling things new in-box, here's what I want from you. I want to know that this knife has never been handled. The person that you're selling, more importantly, the person you're selling it to is going to expect that the knife is new in-box. They want a factory new knife as it came to the dealer. So guess what? If you don't think your knife is new in box, then please don't call it new in box. It's okay not to call it new in box. But this really needs to be reserved for the most untouched, pristine, collectible versions of the knife. Otherwise, you are only going to create a nightmare for yourself later when the person buying it has unrealistic expectations and they get the knife and they find things like patina on the blade or they find the clip has been moved or they find it's been disassembled and reassembled. So please do not call it new in box unless it's new in box. Cool? Cool. The next one is like new in box. This is really stupid that we have new in box like new in box, but I didn't invent these and they were around since before I was with the, the hobby and they're probably going to be here after I'm gone. So I can't change history. All I can do is kind of roll with it. But like new in box, what does that seem like? New in box, but it's like it. So it's not actually new in box, it's like it. Can we agree on that? So what would constitute like new in box? It's been lightly handled. So if I were to take this danger pickle out, unwrap it, play with it for a little while, maybe leave it on my desk for a few days so that I can look at it, that would qualify as like new in box. I can put it right back in the bag. The oil from the bag is gonna go back on the knife a little bit and it's gonna be more or less like it was new in box. Um, the knife cannot be sharpened and be like new in box. It cannot have been used to cut stuff and it can't be altered. Um, one more thing I just thought of that I didn't write down is you can't carry it in your pocket and it get pocket lint in the knife and call it like new in box. So I think in the last, 30 days, I've probably had to throw out, I don't know, six to eight people because they kept using like new in box to describe knives that had been sharpened, they had been dropped, they had been disassembled and the screws were stripped. And think about if you were the buyer. The reason I'm, the reason I'm, not, I'm doing this is not to crack on sellers. I'm really trying to protect buyers because buyers can only go on what you tell them. And when somebody's gonna buy a knife, they're expecting it to be as you described it. So like new in box needs to be knives that have been gently handled. And that's it. This knife is not like new in box. It looks really good, doesn't it? It looks great. The reality is, is I carried this all day today. I'm not the original owner and the guy I bought it from is also not the original owner. This knife's been carried and it's been flicked and it's been futzed with and it's been used to cut things. This is a, this is a light user. This is not like new in box. And even if I take the time to clean it up, if any part of the knife appears to be altered or disassembled or used, then it's really not ethical to call it like new in box, okay? 
the next one we're going to talk about is probably my favorite. FFIB. Finger flicked in box. This is so funny, we put it on the sticker. Finger flicked in box. So what does this mean? <laughs> it kind of means something, right? It means a knife that was bought new, like this one, and then it was taken out of the box, and it was flicked for a couple days, and then it was resold. So where does this come into play? Honestly, it comes into play often because I know a lot of you will buy knives on speculation. Maybe a new model comes out and you've never touched one before and you want to check it out. Well, if you're going to check it out for a couple of days but not really carry it and not really cut stuff with it, then I guess it could be FFIB. So if we're going to steer into the skid a little bit, we're going to actually use this as a real descriptor, then I think we need to be clear on the definition. So FFIB would mean that it was flicked but otherwise like new in box and so not sharpened. The clip hasn't been moved. It hasn't been altered. It hasn't been disassembled. What's up, Ryan? We're talking about uh, conditions of knives and how to define it. So can we agree that FFIB cannot be a user? I think it can't be a user. The spirit of this is that it's just been flicked with. So here's some other things that are pretty useful to talk about if you're selling a knife. Carried a few times. Listen, I'll find an example here. Here's two PM2s. This one's been carried by me probably two dozen times and the clip's been moved. This one has been removed from the wrapper and then put into my case and it has not been used to cut anything. The clip hasn't moved, it hasn't really been handled. Um, I have I have used EDCI on the blade to keep it nice, but it shouldn't have any pocket lint in it. it does, the handle's not dirty. I've never had to even clean the G10 because it hasn't been messed with. So this knife and this knife, if, you, if I were to hand them both to you guys, to any of you, and you played with it, I don't think you'd find any damage to the one I've been carrying. But despite that, this is a knife I've carried and that one isn't, okay? So are we talking about a 30 or 40% reduction in value? Of course not. This knife is worth somewhere between $220 and $230. That seems to be what a new in-box uh, 10V seems to go for. Um, because it's been out of the box for a while, I would not call it new in-box. I wouldn't call it a light carry because I've never carried it. I wouldn't call it FFIB. I've never flicked it. This one has definitely been carried a few times. I moved the clip. Moving the clip is kind of, unfortunately for us, for everybody, until Eric and Sal change their mind, we're always going to have a ghost image of a clip right here, right? So I almost don't care anymore because the reality is, is none of us are going to be satisfied with the clip up here except for Sammy. The clip either has to go here or it has to go here. Otherwise, you just literally can't carry it. But... A big, a big decider between whether it's new in box or not, in my opinion, is whether the clip's been moved. So this knife doesn't even qualify as an FFIB. It's been in my pocket for a few weeks. It has a different clip on it. This is not FFIB. This is a light user. Light user. What does light user mean? Well, I haven't opened a beer with it like Rich Cox might. Um, I haven't cut any underwater cable like... Uh, Josh PM2 OG might, and I haven't uh, thrown it at a tree like Dan Tan might. I've simply carried this in my pocket, and I've used it to open boxes with more knives in them, right? That's about the extent of what I've done with this knife. I moved the clip, but this is not a, um, this is not a beater, right? Cut some paper. Honestly, who hasn't cut some paper? On a satin-finished knife, I don't know that this matters, but on a DLC, have you guys noticed that if you use DLC, like the second you use DLC, it no longer looks new? Well, if you're selling a DLC blade, please be upfront and honest about the fact that you might have cut some paper with it. Clip moved. Seriously, truly, people who, people who don't use knives who collect them for the collectability of it will be very, very angry at you if you've moved a clip. When I was a young lad uh, three years ago, and I was starting in this hobby, I had a knife, I moved the clip. I told the guy twice in our conversation that I had moved the clip and put it back. Um, and when he got the knife, he was still angry at me because the clip had been moved. 
he very clearly asked me, is this knife in mint condition? And I said, yes, but the clip has been moved. I, well, I shouldn't have just said yes. I should have said, no, the clip was moved. Um, he was very upset with me. I ended up having to buy him an extra set of scales. That was a lesson learned, right? Um, did he misunderstand me? Yes. Was it my job to make sure he understood me? Also, yes. And so uh, I needed to be more uh, upfront and honest about that. Um, adjusted. So I listen, many of you are very good at adjusting knives. So it wouldn't bother me, me personally at all, if some, if you adjusted a knife, but I've also purchased knives secondhand where screws are stripped out. And because the picture is blurry or it's at a weird angle, I can't tell. And then I get the knife and I get it home and I see that the thing's all jacked up and I got to go buy an extra set of screws or worse than that, it's red thread locked in there and the screws stripped out and I'm totally, totally stuck because now I got to dremel the thing. I got to buy new scales and I got to buy new screws and I have to hope I don't jack the pivot up while I'm trying to get the screw out. See where I'm going with this? If someone has tried to adjust a knife and you're the one buying it, you would want to know. So please be upfront and honest if you've adjusted a knife or if you're not the original owner and you're reselling a knife, if it looks like or appears to have been adjusted, then please be upfront and honest about it. So I forgot my whole point a minute ago. So maybe this knife's worth $230. Well, how much is a light carry knife worth? $210? All right, I lost 20 bucks. So what? I got to carry it and I got to use it for a while. Um, don't be so scared of losing a few dollars on a sale that you're going to be dishonest about the, um, the description of the knife. Believe me, it is much more expensive to your reputation if you are dishonest than if you're upfront and honest and you tell the truth every time. Okay. So please be truthful when you're talking about the stuff. If you're going to disassemble a knife, put it back together. That's something else that a buyer might want to know. So keep that in mind. Nothing wrong with a scale swap, and there's nothing wrong with taking a knife apart, putting it back together, making it look all brand new. Like here's an example. Let's say, um, let's say Thomas Moore takes apart a knife and then reassembles it and sells it as like new. I think we all trust that Thomas Moore knows how to take a knife apart and put it back together again, right? So you kind of have to decide on a case by case basis if that bothers you or if it doesn't. Now, many of you would also not buy a knife that's been disassembled because you want a pristine, perfect knife. Nothing wrong with that. By the way, the more I leave this out here and the more it's laying around on my desk, the less this knife is like new in box. Probably shouldn't leave it out. Just today, I had an, I'd spent 90 minutes talking to a poor guy that traded a danger pickle and $75 for two knives. And he was told that they were, bro, they're new. Bro, bro, they're like new. They're great. They're perfect. Perfect blades. He gets them. One of them's got a scuff on the G10 and an area of, of uh, uh, patina on the blade. And then the other knife had some scratches in the DLC and the clip had obviously been jacked from carrying the knife. Right, So he contacts the guy, and the guy goes on this long tirade about how he's a word, man of his word. I'm a man of my word. And the second he says, hey, man, these knives are not in the condition that you said they were, the guy quits the club, and he blocks the person that he did the trade with. I can't find him now. Dude's gone. So did he totally rip the guy off? No, he didn't totally rip him off. The guy that got the two knives for the one got a pretty good deal, but still, it's not what he expected. So managing expectations is the key to having a really good deal and being happy and satisfied on the other end of it. So please manage expectations and, and be open and honest and transparent with your brothers in the club. Yeah, Danny, if you buy a knife from Thomas, you'll be the first. So let's talk about something else. Selling a knife. If you're selling a knife, guess what? You don't really have to use these acronyms if you don't want to. If I was going to sell this knife right now, if I was going to list this knife, you know how I'd list it? I would take pictures of the knife. I'd probably take a dozen pictures, open, closed, from all angles, or better than that, I would shoot about five videos of it. I'd shoot videos of me opening and closing the knife. I'd do a video of the edge on both sides so you can see the condition. I'd shoot, make sure you saw for sure that the tip was clean. I'd make sure you saw that it wasn't a second. And I'd show you every piece of this knife, and then I'd just put a price on it. So if you can't tell the condition from five videos and a price, 
then you should probably ask, right? So the person I'm going to sell it to, I'm going to tell them anything they need to know about it. Hey, by the way, I'm left-handed, so the clip's going to have a ghost on the wrong side. You good with that? I priced it accordingly. And then the person buying it can either say, yeah, swell, or they can say, no way, I had no idea, that's awful. But being transparent and upfront and honest about this stuff is the way you're going to make people happy. It's the way you're going to build a good relationship and a good rep in the club. And then down the road, when you need to flex a little bit and buy something that people don't normally associate with you, you can point to all the people you've done business with, and they'll be excited and happy to give you good recommendations, right? All we have is our word here. We're on the internet. If you ask your grandma tomorrow whether or not she thought it was a good idea for you to buy a knife over the internet from a stranger, she'd hit you with her purse, right? So why are we going against grandma and buying knives on the internet? Because we're dumb. No, because we want these things and they're cool. That's why. And we trust each other and we have to rely on each other's honor. So please uphold that and uh, do the honorable thing and be honest about this stuff. So pictures, take lots of pictures, do videos, do videos of the edge, the jimping, the tip, the handle and the screws. Why do we want to do the jimping? Well, we want to do the jimping because we need to know if it's a factory second or not, right? Please don't sell a knife that's a factory second as a new knife. This happens from time to time. And honestly, there, there are some of you that know, some of you know the difference. Ryan, I know your grandma's a thug. I'm scared of her. Some of you know the difference between a second and a, and a regular knife. Many of you don't. So please find out before you sell a knife, right? Know what you're doing. The pictures must be yours. If we find out that you're using someone else's pictures to sell your knife, I'm going to jerk your sale post. And at best, we're going to mute you, but we'll probably throw you out. Do not use somebody else's pictures in your listing. Do you understand the huge problem that is? I mean, if I buy a knife and then I save the pictures on my phone, and then a month later I sell the knife after I've carried it a little bit, who knows what's happened to the knife in that month? Would You certainly would not want to buy a knife from somebody who is using somebody else's pictures, so please don't do it to someone else. The pictures need to be yours. And if you can't find good light, by the way, go outside. Honestly, my favorite place to shoot pictures now, I've got this little crappy bush on the front of my house. It's got a dead part on the side of it, but the pretty part is always pretty, and I just set the knife right on the bush, and I get amazing pictures of the knife. So outside early in the morning or late in the afternoon, you're going to get phenomenal pictures. It'll be hard to get a bad one. You won't have to do any editing other than maybe a little cropping, but it's going to look really good. So outside light's going to be your friend. Thanks. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover on that topic. Outside light doesn't lie. That's right, Rich. You guys have any questions? Bonsai tree. Yeah, I'd love one. Does this make sense? You guys good with this stuff? I don't know why it took me so long to do this. You know what I've noticed lately? Brian Holocker tells me stuff, and then later on I realize that he was right. And then I do it and I feel better. So thanks, Brian. You're like that super annoying little angel on my shoulder. It tells me the right thing to do. Sam Daughtry wants a recap. Okay. So Sam, if you're selling a knife and you want to call it new in box, it better be unopened and it better be as it came from the store. New in box doesn't mean that it looks good to you. New in box means that you haven't messed with the knife at all. So please be very careful not to overuse this. And my entire collection, I have two knives I would consider new in box. Knives that I've never taken out of the packaging. So those are new in box. Like new in box, that's next. So what is like new in box? Like new in box is more about what it isn't. It's like new. But it's not new in box. If it was new in box, it would be NIB. It's LNIB, right? So maybe it's been lightly handled. It has not been sharpened. It has not been used to cut stuff. It has not been altered. It has not been disassembled. It has not been used to baton anything. So this better look like it was new in box, but it really kind of wasn't new in box. FFIB is the new funny thing we've been saying. Basically means finger flicked in box. 
flick is, uh, you can substitute that for a different word, but an FFIB knife has been purchased. It's been screwed around with. Maybe you bought it, maybe you left it on your desk for a week while you try to decide if you liked it or not. And then while you did this, like on your drive to work in the morning and then left it in your cup holder, but you never really used it to cut anything, that'd be an FFIB knife. Jesus, this lock is tight. Good grief. Sweet honey barbecue. I need to work on that one. So FFIB would be a knife that you flick, but otherwise it's fine. Thanks, Ryan. Some descriptors that you should probably tell a buyer. You've carried it a few times. It's a light user. You've used it to cut some stuff. You move the clip. You adjusted the knife. You disassembled the knife. If any of this is true, you need to tell the buyer before they buy it. Don't tell them after they buy it. You know what happens? The buyer comes to the admins and the moderators and they tell us what happened and then we have to adjudicate or throw somebody out of the group. It's not fun. Israel wants to know if I have any fixed blades. I've got some fixed blades, but I don't carry them because they don't fit my lifestyle. If I'm out in the woods, I might carry one, but uh, otherwise I don't. So if you're selling, please provide pictures. Do not sell with a description and no pictures. We're going to delete it. Actually, a better solution is to take videos. Take a video of the edge, take a video of the jimping, a video of the tip, video of the handle, video of the screws. You can shoot 20 seconds worth of video into any listing, and it's going to post it. It'll look nice. It'll be pretty. Make sure you show off the sheen on the blade. If there's any scratches, show the tip. Show whether it's a factory second or not. Show whether it's been sharpened. Show the condition of the screws so people can see if the knife's been disassembled or not. If you move the clip, show people the ghost image of where the clip used to be so they can decide whether or not they want it. Uh, show them this area so they know if it's a fake or not. Is everybody aware of that? The easiest way to spot a fake on a PM2 is it'll have sharp corners here and here. I don't care about all the other crap, right? There's, there's 50 ways to tell, but the one dead giveaway that always works is you're going to have square corners on the G10 here and here. Works every time. So those are all things that you need to know. Um, Mike Williams says, you'll have a hard time selling a knife as new in box without picks. I agree. So in the description, just put uh, taken out of packaging for pictures. That works, right? But, you know, I've seen lots of guys selling danger pickles still wrapped in the plastic. Um, I think buyer beware on that. I would ask somebody to take it out and show it to me. I wouldn't buy it wrapped up in plastic. I want to know that it's okay. So in that moment, please take the knife out of the, out of the plastic. Take some good pictures, right? Um, if you can't get good good if you can't get good light, go outside. You're gonna get great light outside. Anytime before 9 a.m. in the morning, you're gonna get fantastic light. And then at towards sunset, as the sun starts to get low in the sky, the color starts to change. You're gonna get really great pictures. So um, you you almost can't take a bad shot around I don't know 8 p.m. So keep that in mind. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on. Knife condition and what we need to do. Oh, look who's here. Dan just shows up. That's what we need to know in order to have a happy, healthy, uh, used knife community. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Um, if you have any friends that need some help with this, tag them in it, put a heart next to it, or say, tough love, bro. And uh, they can watch the video and they can learn some more. Yeah, Jeffrey says, uh, Jefferson, excuse me, says no direct sunlight and you're good. Yeah, I agree. Um, some indirect sunlight when it's low in the sky works really, really great. Another great spot is in the grass. There's something about the green, green grass in the Midwest that makes almost everything look good. Your pictures are going to look great. Um, our cameras on our phones are red sensitive. And there's something about the green of the grass that makes the camera trick it tricks it into taking a better color picture. It seems more true if you have a green background. Don't know why. So some tips from old Jason. Have a good night.